My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. The study manuals for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 65. Please turn to it. Page number 65 and today is our lesson number 16. Today, on page number 65, as you can see there, we will deal with the notion of decimals and fractions. How to convert decimals to fractions, fractions to decimals and so on and so forth. There are three problems there. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many there are. But anyway, the very first one that you see there on page number 65 is problem number 217, which, which says, which is asking us to convert 3 over 125 to a decimal. Let's see what we can do here. Let's see what we can do here. 3 over, 3 over 125 to a decimal. As you can see, these are not, these are not sort of things we, we deal with in our daily lives, especially with our calculator. How does the book do it? Oh, Jesus Christ. No, no, no. The book is doing the longhand division. We don't want to deal with that freaking thing. Listen, 3 over, 3 over, 20, 3 over 125. The idea is to somehow convert it into simple, simple decimals that we can multiply very easily. So let's see what we can do here. Well, let's multiply the top and bottom by 100. Okay, let's just see what happens. Multiply top and bottom by 100, which is perfectly fine to do that because if you multiply something by 100 over 100, you are essentially multiplying this thing by 1, so it doesn't change anything. Let's divide now top and bottom by 25. If you divide top and bottom by 25, how many 25s in 100? 100 has 4 25s. How many 25s in 125? It has Five. There you go. So now what it boils down to is this. What it boils down to is 3 over 5 times, ah, now we're getting some place, 4 over 100. How much is 3 fifth in decimal? Now this is something that you have to know. As I told you before already, several days ago when we started this percentage things, let me quickly look at it. I think it was day number 8. We just discussed it yesterday. On day number 8 and day number 9, if you have not watched the video, so I'm just going to check very quickly if I'm correct. Yes, on day number 8 and on day number 9, if you have not watched those two videos, go back and make sure you watch those videos. You must watch all the videos in sequence, one after the other, because I assume, I take it for granted, that there are certain things that you already know by now in this stage in the game. When we get to day number 16, I already assume that everything that we learn on day 1 through 15, you know it. Otherwise, we'll not, we'll, we'll not get anywhere. On day 8 and 9, we learn how to recognize the tenths, the fifths, the quarters, the eighth, and the sixth. You must know this thing by heart at your fingertips during the exam. And if we did that, we would immediately recognize that three fifth is just 0.6. It's just 0.6. How much is four over 100? A four over 100 is just 0 0.04. 0 0.04. All you have to do now is multiply this thing, which is very simple to do. We've been doing this thing all along. How much is six times four? Six times four is 24. Okay, watch what happens. 6 times 4 is 24. Now we have to take care of the decimal place. This guy, 0 0.04, has two decimal places. 1, 2. 0 0.6 has one decimal place. So we have to move the decimal point, which, which is located right now here. We have to move the decimal point three places. 1, 2, and 3. It goes here. And we stick a 0. Very good. That's your answer. 0 .0, 0 0.024 is our answer. 0 0.024 is an answer. Like I said, don't turn, it, don't turn it into a freak show, what they are doing in the book, my God. Let's go to the next one. Convert one-sixth to a decimal. Again, you see? Convert one-sixth into a decimal, but there is nothing to convert. We already did that. Uh, as I said, on day number eight and nine, we did the tenths, the fifths, the quarters, the eighth, and the sixth. Let's take a look at it. So that's it. We are done with this thing. I'll give you one more. One more time, very quickly, what we did here was we were given 3 over 125, we multiplied the top and bottom by 100, and the reason we do that is because having 100 at the bottom is not a problem. You can convert anything into a decimal if you have 100 at the bottom. If you ask me what is 37 over 100, it's just 0.37. If you ask me how much is uh, 22 over 100, I don't have to think, it's just 0.22. So that's why we stick 100 at the bottom because it's easy to deal with. And then we use this top 100 to manipulate this guy because trying to divide 3 by 125 is a hell. Now that we have 100 on the top, that 100 can take on that guy. This 3 cannot take, the 3 is too puny, he cannot take on 125. 
So that 100 takes on 125, it chops it down to 5, now it is manageable, 3 over 5 is just 0.6. And that just becomes 4 over 100, which here, here, what we end up here is no concern of us, as I told you before, it's just over 100. Even if we had 37 over, over there, even if we had ended up with 37 over there, it wouldn't freak us out, because 37 is just 0.37, because we're dividing by 100. That's how we do it. What's the next one? Convert one sixth into decimal. Convert a sixth into a decimal. Well, a sixth, a sixth, as we learned already on day number nine, is simply a half of a third. A sixth is just half of a third. One times one is one, and two times three is six. And how much is a third? A third is thirty-three percent. So it's just half of thirty-three point three three percent. Go on and on and on. And how much is that? Shall we? Let's find out. Let's find out. Let me write this properly. Half of thirty, half of one third is simply 0.3333. Go on and on and on over two. And now all we have to do is divide it. Let's do it, shall we? I should have written a bit little. I should have written it a little bit lower because I need the room. You'll see why I need the room in a second. It just goes on and on. Let's divide by two. How do we divide this quantity by two? Well, you'll see in a second. First we have a zero here and a decimal. How many threes in a two? Sorry, how many twos in a three? This is a three. How many twos does three contain? Three has only one two. What happens to the remaining one? Well, the remaining one goes and joins this three, becomes 13. How many twos? Because we're dividing by two, you see? How many twos in 13? 13 has six twos. Six twos are 12. Oh, what happens to the remaining one? The remaining one goes and joins this 3, becomes 13. How many 2's in a 13? 13 has 6 2's. What happens to the remaining one? The remaining one goes and joins this 3, becomes 13. How many 2's in 13? 13 has 6 2's. Should I keep on going or are you getting a hang of it? I'm just being silly, you understand. It's just going to go on forever. It's never going to end. That's your answer. In decimal, one sixth is approximately, well, we don't have to write approximately, we can write the precise answer. I'm going to write the precise answer and then I'm going to give you the approximate. It is precisely, since we are looking for decimal, in decimal it is exactly equal to 0.16, and that's it, you put a bar on it. That means six is going to go on forever and ever, it never ends. It never ends. Let's see, how does the book write it, the answer? No, 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 no. No, the freaking thing is wrong in the book. In the book they write it like this. Look, I'm going to write it the way it is in the book, which is wrong. Let me make sure that before I go around pontificating as to what the book is doing, let me just make sure my eyes are not deceiving me. It says the exact answer could be written as 0.16 and a bar over it. That is absolutely wrong. Let me show you what the book says and then I'll tell you why it is wrong. Okay, pay very close attention. Uh, I really want to make a big fuss about it, so where should I write it? Let's, let's put it here. In the book they tell you that the answer is 0.16 and listen carefully, and they have a bar on both of these. You know what that means when you put a bar on both of this thing? That means that the answer is 0.16, 0.16, 0.16, forever and ever. That is not what we have here. The answer is not 0 0.16161616. 1616. That's not the answer. The answer is 0 0.166666. There is a world of difference between this quantity and that quantity. This quantity is wrong. There is a misprint in the book. That bar should not have extended over the 1. That bar should have stopped at 6. I'm so paranoid. I keep checking it here. It is. That's exactly what it is. It says the exact answer could be written as and they have the bar all the way up to 1, unless my, eye, unless my eyes are deceiving, but I don't believe so. That is wrong. So this is a precise answer. How do we write this approximately? Do you know? Actually, not approximately. I'll give you the precise answer one more time in a different version, in, in the percentages. They're asking us to convert this, uh, this, uh, this fraction into decimal. Let's ask a new question. Let's convert this fraction into percentage. Shall we? Precise answer. And precise answer would be 16... 16 and 2 third percent. Why 16 and 2 third percent? Because the 6666 that you see there, that's your 2 third. Because we know 2 third equals 6666. So there is your 16. Because if you want to, this is what's going on. 
if you have to convert this thing, if you have to convert this quantity into percentage, what we do is we multiply by 100. And we, when we multiply by 100, the decimal place is going to shift two places. One, two, it's going to become 16, 16.6666 percent, which is exactly 16 and two-third percent. So that's another way of expressing the answer, 16 and two-third percent. Let's, let's put it here. 16 and two-third percent. Oh my God, why do they get me excited? I do not know. That is wrong, what they have in the book. That is the second time we have found a mistake in the book. The first time around, if you recall, if you've been watching all the videos, you recall, they had given us the wrong unit. Instead of cubic centimeter, they gave us centimeters when we were talking about the volume of a box there, which was on, where was it? It was early in the, in the somewhere. But they, they gave us, it can't, it can't be that difficult to find because it starts on page 50. There you go. A man wants to build a fence around his garden on page number 53. If you recall on that problem on page 53, at the very end, the answer that they gave us was not, express, was not expressed in the proper unit. Oh no, that's not the one. That's where they're talking about the price. I can't find it. Oh, there it is. On page number 60 is where the misprint was. On page number 60, they give us uh, they gave us three dimensions, and, the, and our job was to figure out the volume of the thing, which was a uh, which was a cubic centimeter, and they have it in the book as simple centimeters. It's wrong. You understand? That is all it takes. That is all it takes to excite a geek. Trust me, you don't have to do anything more in the wrong unit, that's it. Let's do the next one, shall we? If your ladies are watching it and you're wondering how to excite him and if he happens to be geek, just tell him the answer is 25 centimeter when it is 25 centimeter cube. That's all it takes. He'll be excited. Number Nineteen on the next page, page number sixty sixty six, number nineteen. See, I've been talking so long is this thing is getting dry. Number nineteen. Convert one fifth into decimal. This is ridiculous. This is simply ridiculous. Why is it here? Convert there should be a question mark. Convert one fifth into a decimal. Of course, we know how to convert one fifth into a decimal. One fifth is just 0 0.2. And they ask you to convert this into percentage, just as 20%. Just as silly. That's just elementary. We learned it a long, long time ago. We learned it on day eight and day nine, if you recall. Let's do the next one. That was it. Number 20. 20 says, convert. Oh, we don't need this on the blackboard. This is silly. Convert. 0 0.025 to a fraction to a fraction in simplest form. Well, let's do it, shall we? Point zero two five. Well, if you want to convert this into a fraction, you have to get rid of this decimal. That's the whole point. How do we get rid of this decimal? Well, let's find out, shall we? This decimal has three places. One, two, three. So if you want to multiply this by a thousand, a thousand times 0 0.025, if you multiply this quantity by a thousand, the decimal would have to be moved three places. One, two, three. And we'll end up with 25 here. But we can simply multiply it by a thousand and leave it at that. That will change the quantity that they're giving us. Since we're multiplying the top by 1,000, we have to divide it. We have to, uh, since we are multiplying the top by 1,000, we have to multiply the bottom by 1,000. What was in the bottom before? What was in the bottom before? On the bottom, on the bottom we had 1. It's always there. 1 is always there. 
So what we had was point, point zero 0.025 over 1, even though the 1 was not written there, it's there. So since we're multiplying the top by 1,000, we have to multiply the bottom by 1,000. And by doing so, we are essentially multiplying the whole thing by 1 because 1,000 over 1,000 is 1. And now 0 0.025 times 1,000, as we already discussed, simply becomes 25. So what we have is 25 over 1,000, which can be written as, which can be written as 100 times 10. And you'll see why I did it in, in this way in a second. 100 times 10. How many 25s in 100? 100 has four 25s. So let's divide top and bottom by 25. So that becomes 1, and this 100 is going to become 4. There you go, we are almost there. So on the top now we have 1, and on the bottom we have 4 times 10, which is 40. That's it, we did it. The question was how to convert this thing into a fraction. In its simplest form, the answer is this, this quantity in its simplest form in fraction is 1 40th. Is 1 40th. That's all. Let's do the next one. Is there one more on the page? No, it's, that's the next page, the 5 8. We're not going to go there. Page 67. Let's not start page 67 right now. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.